In today's episode, we'll be focusing on the Bank of Canada's monetary decision announcement coming up, as well as other economic calendar data, all in the midweek wrap with Bob Mason of FX Empire. Hello, Bob, and thank you for joining us once again today. Uh, It's been a busy start to the week on the economic calendars, uh, but what can we expect for the second half of the week? Is there anything specific that we need to be looking out for? It's a busy second half of the week for the markets. On Thursday on the economic calendar, from the Eurozone, we've got consumer confidence numbers due out on Thursday evening. Uh, We've seen the Euro being particularly sensitive to the confidence numbers with the ECB reliant upon consumer spending. So expect some moves. That comes after the ECB monetary policy decision later today. Um, No moves expected by the ECB. We will be looking for any updates on the framework review, however, and if there are any revisions to forecasts. Um, Economic data continues to be lackluster. So let's see how Lagarde sees things, you know, going into a second policy decision meeting. Um, On Friday, it's a busy day for the markets. We've got Eurozone, US, UK and Japanese uh, private sector PMI numbers, prelim numbers for January. So those are going to have some impact. And there's inflation figures out of New Zealand and Japan to also consider. So not done yet. Plenty of moves left to come for the currencies. And let's not forget the loonie. Uh, so, you know, we've got retail sales out tomorrow evening. Um, so that's definitely going to have an influence. It's a big day for the loonie uh, with wholesale figures and house price figures due to be released. Uh, Coinciding with the Bank of Canada's monetary decision announcement, what can we expect from this and how will it affect the loonie in particular and the markets in general? On Wednesday, the Bank of Canada held rates steady, which was in line with market expectations. However, uh, Bank of Governor Pollers in the press conference delivered a dovish speech that sunk the, sunk the loonie. Um, they opened the door to a rate cut near term. Much will depend on economic indicators between now and the next policy meeting. Um, there is slack, and if there's persistence in economic weakness, the rate cut will deliver. Um, the BOC held rates unchanged really because of um, rising debt level, household debt levels. Um, they didn't want to rock the boat on consumer spending. So, dovish, and when we're looking at economic indicators, the GDP numbers were you know, really pointing towards the need for a dovish delivery, um, despite last month's comments from Polis who had said that econo- uh, interest rates were at the right levels for support of the economy. So retail sales figures due out tomorrow for the loonie. That's, we're going to expect the loonie to be particularly sensitive to data going forward. Um, expect any weakness to, to weigh heavily on the loonie. Forecasts are positive, however, so that should provide some support and reverse some of the losses from yesterday. The date for the UK leaving the EU is almost upon us. Uh, how is the pound reacting to this as we move closer to this date? For the pound, We saw employment figures on Tuesday give a much needed boost. Economic indicators have been quite dire leading up to those numbers. So that was was a positive. Was it enough to avoid a rate cut next week for the BOE? Uh, Probably not. Much will depend on tomorrow's private sector PMI numbers. Uh, Focus will be on service sector activity. If there is a contraction, um, that really does pave the way for a rate cut. Other indicators have also been disappointing. So there's very little there for the BOE to hold on to other than, you know, the better than expected uh, claimant counts and rise in employment through November. So we could see the the pound take another dive tomorrow, you know, forecast are for the service sector to contract in January. Not being... Such big movements at the start of the week for the Aussie and the Kiwi. Um, With the ongoing bushfires in Australia, um, can we see an improvement or any shift of movement in the second half of the week? For the Aussie dollar, there are no further stats to consider in the week. Economic data out of Australia on Thursday morning gave the Aussie a much needed boost. Employment numbers impressed despite the bushfires. Uh, The reality is that a lot of those, uh, the jump in employment level was part-time rather than full-time. So, you know, the jury's out on whether there's been a material shift in labour market conditions. Uh, Expectations are for the RBA to still cut. You know, obviously, much will depend on the economic indicators in the coming weeks. Um, You know, we're going to need to see consumer spending hold steady um, for the RBA to stand pat. Consumer confidence did fall in, according to data released earlier in the week. So if that's anything to go by, then consumer spending is likely to fall back. 
and that will give a green light to the RBA. So no further stats for the RBA uh, for the RBA to consider in the week and for the market. So Aussie dollar found a boost, but will that hold on? It remains to be seen. For the Kiwi dollar, we've got inflation figures for fourth quarter numbers due out on Friday morning. Um, forecasts are for the RBA, RBNZ to stand pat through the year. If if the inflation numbers are in line with market expectations, a 1.8% annual rate of inflation does give the RBNZ a, a reason to hold. You know, near term, much will then depend on economic indicators in the coming months. So RBNZ on hold, RBA likely to cut. So pressure remaining on the Aussie dollar and if inflation numbers impress tomorrow, expect uh, the Kiwi dollar to get a bounce. Okay, Bob, thank you so much for joining us once again this week. Uh, that was the midweek wrap with Bob Mason of FX Empire, and we will see you again next week.